entire world uses the metric system for measurements. The entire world, except for Liberia, Myanmar, and the United States of America. In the USA, we use English units like inches, feet, pounds, quarts, and gallons, which is fine, except for that you have to memorize or look up the strange conversions to get from one unit to another. To avoid confusion, scientists around the world have adopted the metric system, which is based on multiples of 10. The base unit for measuring length is the meter, the base unit for measuring mass is the gram, and the base unit for volume is the liter. In order to measure anything smaller or larger than these base units, you can add a prefix that's a multiple of 10. There are six prefixes that go smaller and larger than the base unit that I'll show you. There are lots more than this, but these are the ones that you're most likely to come in contact with. In the middle are the base units with a value of one, like one meter, one liter, or one gram. On the right will be smaller values, and to the left will be larger values. If we want to use a unit that's 10 times smaller than the base value because a meter, liter, or gram are too big, we can go down to the one tenth and use the prefix deci, which is abbreviated with the letter D. Then you can have a decimeter, deciliter, or decigram. One hundredth is centi, with the letter C for centimeter, centiliter, and centigram. And one one thousandth is milli, letter M, for millimeter, milliliter, and milligram. We can go to larger units when we're measuring larger things too. Ten times larger is deca, and is abbreviated DA to distinguish it from deci. So you can have decameters, decaliters, and decagrams. One hundred times larger than one unit is hecto, letter H, for hectometer, hectoliter, and hectogram. And one thousand times larger than the base unit is kilo, or K, for kilometer, kiloliter, and kilogram. I use a mnemonic to remember the order from kilo to milli, and it's King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. But you can make up your own to help you remember their order. Let's see how to use this information. You can take any prefix and attach it to any metric base unit. If you chose kilo and gram, you'd have a kilogram with the symbol kg. Or you could choose deca and meter and get a decameter with the symbol dam. Or you could choose milli and liter and get milliliter with the symbol m with a capital L. You could make any combination you need. There's one other really great thing about the metric system, and that's how easy it is to convert from one type of measurement to another. When you write the units out in order of largest to smallest, the conversions can be very easy. Remember that the smaller values are on the right, and the larger values are on the left. Let's say you had 100 milligrams, and you wanted to know how many grams this was. First, you look at the prefix. It's milli. So we're going to start from milli and move to the left until we get to grams. We have to move it one, two, three times. This means we need to move the decimal point three places to the left. Start with deca and move it to the right until you get to milli. One, two, three, four times. So move the decimal one, two, three, four places to the right and you get 25,000 milliliters. Let's try two more. Practice using your mnemonic to write out the first letters of the prefixes. Let's convert 4.26 centimeters to kilometers. Start at centi and move one, two, three, four, five places to the left. Move the decimal the same direction the same number of times and you get 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000426 kilometers. It's good to do a logic check and see if your answer makes sense. 4.26 centimeters is a very small measurement already, so it makes sense that it would be an extremely small fraction of a kilometer. Let's do one last conversion. 0. 0.0024 hectoliters to milliliters. Start at hecto and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to the right and move the decimal the same number of spaces. And you get 240 milliliters, which is probably a better unit for the smaller volume anyway. Thank you for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.